It's Thursday, January 2. This is the news on PBCJ. I am Simone Absalom. 2020 is being envisioned by our leaders as a year of transformation. Governor General Sir Patrick Allen has called on Jamaicans to not lose sight of our national goals. We must remain optimistic about 2020 as the year of transformation. Transformation for our country as we start the final push in the journey to achieve our goals for Vision 2030. Transformation in our personal and moral development, in our family bonds so that they can be stronger. Transformation in our values and attitudes where we are more respectful, disciplined, caring, and gentle. Let us welcome the new year with enthusiasm and make our nation prouder and stronger as the months roll by. With 2019 returning figures of over 1,300 murders, the curbing of this scourge was a major plank for Prime Minister Andrew Holness's message. My government is committed to bringing the murder rate down. The target set by the Social Partnership approximates the regional average of 16 murders per 100,000 of population within the near term. Unfortunately, there are those among us that appear to accept the high level of crime and violence as normal. Political disunity and gamesmanship over crime fighting and national security policy have real effects on our lives. Lack of support from the opposition resulted in a break in the SOEs for the first four months of 2019. And an unusual spike in homicides in November meant that we ended 2019 approximately 3.4% higher in homicides than 2018 when we saw a record decline of 22%. While the SOEs have been very effective when and where we have been able to use them, we have used the space they create to build the capacity of our national security apparatus to respond to the current level of crime and violence in the society. Mr. Holness outlined aspects of his Secure Jamaica initiative. All Jamaicans should take hope that with sound policy, programs and plans, we can reduce murders. But it will take a long-term, concerted and united commitment to stick with the plan. I'm confident in our plan to secure Jamaica. For the first time, Jamaica is engaged in building a national security architecture fit for the times that will deal with domestic threats, but will also deal effectively with our air and maritime space and borders, in addition to securing our cyber domain, which is becoming more important as the world becomes digital. He also signaled a no-tolerance approach to traffic violations. The government has decided to invest heavily in traffic management and traffic violation detection technology. And this year, the traffic ticketing system and the enabling regulations for the new Road Traffic Act should be complete. Many more traffic offenders will be caught and ticketed, and there will be no more amnesty for the foreseeable future. For his part, opposition leader Dr. Peter Phillips was less than optimistic in his 2020 outlook. Having barely survived an internal leadership challenge in 2019, he referenced the possibility of general election being held in this new year. From all appearances, 2020 may be an election year when we will all be called upon to take important decisions regarding the future of our country. We must take our responsibilities seriously and prepare ourselves to do our duty on behalf of our country and chart the course for a better future. A ban is now in effect on local manufacturer distribution and use of expanded polystyrene foam products used in the food and beverage industry. This is being done as part of initiatives to place greater focus on pollution control. Senator Matthew Samuda says public education has been done and he is comfortable that people are aware. He told JIS News the ban on expanded polystyrene foam products is better for the environment and for public health. 
Samuda also reminded Jamaicans that persons who breach the ban will face the full force of the law. The maximum fine under the Trade Act, Trade Plastic Packing Material Order 2018, is $2 million, while under the NRCA, Plastic Packaging Prohibition Order 2018, the fine is $50,000. Both orders carry a term of imprisonment of two years. The Jamaica Manufacturers and Exporters Association, JMEA, is expecting a smooth transition from styrofoam to environmentally friendly food packaging. JMEA President Richard Pandowi says there has been an attitude change among Jamaicans and this, along with the fact that there has been no importation of styrofoam products since 2019, should enable a seamless transition. Mr. Pandowi has urged local manufacturers not to rely on imported products as the alternative to styrofoam, but to innovate and produce local alternatives. The construction of Clarendon's new fire station in Maypen is expected to commence in the 2020-2021 financial year. This was disclosed by local government and community development minister Desmond McKenzie during a recent press conference at the ministry's offices in Kingston. We are expected in the new financial year to roll out and, and commence the construction on a brand new facility in Maypen, in Clarendon. Discussions are well advanced to create two more fire stations, one in rural Jamaica and one in the corporate area. Papine has been an area that has been looked at for years as it relates to the location of a new fire station. Those discussions are well advanced. Well, Jamaica. Minister Mackenzie said since 2016, the government has provided more trucks and other equipment to the Jamaica Fire Brigade. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has welcomed plans for a purpose-built pharmacy at the Bustamante Children's Hospital. Mr. Holness toured the pharmaceutical department during a recent visit to the facility. The last time I was here was in 2015. And uh, at that time, there wasn't so much an issue of the overcrowding because we didn't have a, a massive case of dengue. We were just coming out of the chicken gunia mm -hmm. at the time. This visit, it is clear that the dengue um, outbreak has had an impact. But what is also clear is that the facility itself is not sufficient to address the demands yeah. and the varied demands that are presenting themselves. Definitely. This was the old military hospital. It wasn't necessarily in its original structure designed to treat with children. And when we upgraded it at the time, clearly the upgrade took into consideration what technology afforded <laughs> and what knowledge we had. Mm -hmm. In today's world, 50 years onwards, we now know much more and we have even greater technology, but we are constrained by the buildings that we have. He said the new expansion will help to deliver more modern and efficient services. The problem that I'm seeing is that you're on a fixed amount of land, obviously, and we have built one story, two stories in the maximum, and you're spreading out, so you really don't have much more space. So in the long term, because this hospital will be here for another 100 years, we really have to look very carefully at how we, we, we will have to go upward, but just how we utilize the, the, the land space. So I'm very happy that you're getting a purpose-built pharmacy that will be more modern and will help you to deliver service even better than you're, you're doing now. Yeah. This space will become useful, I'm told, yeah. to improve the reception yeah. area. Yeah. You'll yeah. probably create some specialized a &E facilities. But um, the government is committed, as you would see, to improving the facilities here and generally the Prime Minister has reiterated the government's commitment to improving facilities at the Bustamante Hospital. Health professionals and other professionals are being equipped to provide the necessary support to persons suffering from depression and anxiety. Parish psychiatrist for Kingston and St. Andrew, Dr. 
Craig Redlane, says some conditions are prevalent in Jamaica. He says persons should become more sensitized to it. The doctor stated that the Ministry of Health and Wellness does provide training to ensure persons can recognize the characteristics of the conditions. Dr. Redlane added that he is looking forward to guidance that will be provided to human resource practitioners by the workplace mental health policies that are currently being developed in the ministry. The U.S. dollar on Tuesday, December 31, ended trading at $132.57, down by 91 cents. That's according to the Bank of Jamaica's daily exchange trading summary. The Canadian dollar ended trading at $100.15, down from $100.70, while the British pound sterling ended trading at $171.62, up from $170.64. In regional news, CARICOM chairman and prime minister of Barbados, Mia Muthley, has used her New Year's message to urge patients for the implementation of the CARICOM single market and economy, the CSME. The CSME was proposed from as far back as 1990, but key aspects are as yet to be practically implemented across the region. Ms. Muthley called for patients and used the European Union as an example. Our process has therefore been one that has moved from generation to generation of committed Caribbean people to the building of a regional integration movement that will allow us always to work to provide the best lives possible for our people. Lest we be influenced by those who will only see a half empty glass rather than one that is half full, may I remind us all that the European integration movement started on 16th of April 1948. So that as we enter the third decade of the 21st century, they too are still working to perfect that union, despite having far more resources than we have ever had in the Caribbean. She urged CARICOM heads of government to remain committed to implementing the CSME and outlined the next phase in the process. And what is that next phrase, my brothers and sisters? We are duty bound to continue this journey across the community, whether as a collective of the whole or in twos and threes where we are gathered in a way that will, one, remove the obstacles to passport free movement between our nations. Two, make it easier for Caribbean people to go and work where there are opportunities in the community in a way that is hassle free in the same way that we have done it for the movement of capital in keeping with our own Errol Barrow's vision, the reality of our people must not only be a lived reality, but also a legal reality. The Barbados Prime Minister gave a further breakdown to this next stage. Three, to truly advance the process of a single domestic space for transport and communications in our region by working to provide more affordable and reliable air and sea links between our countries, and also to establish a single domestic rate for telephone, telecommunications and phone calls within CARICOM. Four, to work with the private sector and the labor movement to provide further opportunities beyond transport and communications mentioned above, to food security, to opportunities in the blue economy or renewable energy and ICT for our people, opportunities for investment and for employment. Five, enable us as we face the climate crisis to pool the funds of the region in order to be able to finance our own development trajectory for sustainable development so that we may adapt to the new realities of this climate crisis. This will require us coming up with innovative instruments that will better allow us to access the capital that we are not now accessing at a global level. The Caribbean single market has only seen partial implementation across the 12 CARICOM member states. The Trinidad Ministry of Health says the number of people who have died as a result of the influenza virus has risen to 37, as it reiterated an appeal for persons to get vaccinated. In a statement, the ministry said that as of last Friday, the cumulative number of vaccines administered to the public for this flu season was 48,411 
and the number of suspected influenza cases for the year was 3,434. It said 37 people had died as a result of the flu. On December 16, the ministry issued a statement indicating that the death toll was 32 and that the cumulative number of vaccines administered was 40,162. The latest statement reminded the population that the influenza virus is serious and is generally more severe than the common cold. It said the group includes children aged 6 months to 5 years, pregnant women, adults over 65, people with chronic medical conditions, as well as healthcare workforce. Haiti's President Jovenel Moise is calling for peace in the French-speaking Caribbean community country. In a New Year's message, Moise, who has come under increasing pressures from opposition parties to step down amid allegations of corruption, said that 2019 has been a year, quote, lost because of our mistakes and our struggles without grandeur, end quote. Moyes, who came to power in 2017, said that, like the previous year, 2019 has ended leaving the country facing the same challenges. He told Haitians, who are celebrating their 216th anniversary of independence, that only the will to live together can break the instability and create an era of peace and prosperity beneficial to all. In recent weeks, Moyes has been holding talks with some opposition political parties in a bid to establish a government of national unity. In sports, Jamaica's Usain Bolt has been named the Male Athlete of the Decade for Athletics by the Daily Telegraph newspaper in the United Kingdom. The 33-year-old who retired in 2017 won three gold medals at the 100, 200 and 4x100 relay at the 2012 Olympics in London, then repeated the feat at the Rio Games in 2016. Bolt also won a combined eight gold medals at the World Athletics Championships in 2011, 2013, and 2015. The Telegraph not only credited Bolt for his outstanding achievements on the track, but also his presence of it, calling him, quote, the man who grew bigger than the sport, end quote. In other sporting news, Reggae Boys defender Michael Hector is set to make his return to competitive club football on Saturday after being inactive for the first half of the English football season. The 27-year-old signed a pre-contract deal with championship club Fulham in September after failing to secure a move from Europa League champions Chelsea during the summer transfer window. Hector has 30 appearances for the Reggae Boys and was a part of the squad which made the semi-finals of the Gold Cup last summer. And that's the news on PBCJ. I am Simone Absalom. Pleasant viewing.